Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa and we're really happy you're here to watch our video. Today we are making mashed potatoes. Now mashed potatoes is a side item that is really simple and pretty fast to, to get on the table. It's something that you really don't need a lot of ingredients for. But if you've never made mashed potatoes, you may not realize just how easy and how fast they can be. So let me show you how we make our mashed potatoes. First, you're going to need potatoes. Now today we're using yellow potatoes. Normally we use Idaho potatoes, but I've got a bag of these yellow potatoes in the refrigerator and so we're using these today. You can use almost any potato for mashed potatoes. So whatever your favorite is, go ahead and use those. Now, I will tell you that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with potatoes. I love potatoes any way you fix them. I love mashed potatoes, french fries, scalloped potatoes, au gratin, twice baked potatoes, I don't care. I love potatoes. But I have one problem when it comes to making mashed potatoes. You know what that is, Melissa? You make way too many. You feed a whole army, the whole neighborhood. I cannot judge how many potatoes to peel to make mashed potatoes for the right number of people. We always have leftover mashed potatoes. Always. Four days we have <laughs> leftover mashed potatoes because I'm just not a good judge. How many and did I'm, you peel today? Too many, I'm sure. But that's okay because if you have leftover mashed potatoes, you can make potato cakes. You can just have leftover mashed potatoes. They're good, heated up. So anyway, you need potatoes. Today I'm fixing about two and a half pounds. I had a five pound bag, I'm fixing about half of them, which will be way more than the two of us needs. Always. You're also, yeah, I know. It's just the way I do it. You're also going to need some butter. And really it's up to you how much butter you put in. I think the butter and the salt is what makes mashed potatoes good. So. I go heavy on the butter, but you're going to need some butter. You're also going to need just a little bit of milk, just a few splashes. I can't give you an amount because it depends on how many potatoes you're making, how starchy they are, the type of potato. Sometimes I literally just put a splash, a splash, and that's it. Other times I might put a quarter of a cup or even more. So you're going to need a little bit of milk just to help cream them and make them a little smoother. And then of course, you have to have salt and pepper for mashed potatoes. So really, just what, four things, five things? Potatoes, butter, milk, salt, and pepper. A lot of people now, put other things in them too, but we like them this way. That's a good point. A lot of people put things like onions, bacon, cheese, peppers, green onions, all kinds of things. But I think, we think, the best mashed potatoes are just good, plain mashed potatoes. So we don't put anything in ours. Now, if we're making twice baked potatoes, we'll put some onions and some cheese in there. But just to do mashed potatoes, we don't put anything in them. We just do mashed potatoes. Now, I cut my potatoes in fourths, and then I take each of those fourths and cut those in about, oh, a half inch cube or so. Um, you really, you don't want teeny tiny pieces because you don't want them to cook into mush. If you cook your potatoes until they're mushy, they're going to be really starchy and kind of gummy. So you don't want to cook them that long. We have in company that I don't know about. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. We will enjoy them tomorrow after church and Monday and I hear Tuesday. this every time I make mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's just too easy. Okay, so by the way, you noticed that I, as I peeled my potatoes and cut them up, I did have them in a bowl of water because if you don't, potatoes will start to turn brown. So you want to keep them in some water 
while you're peeling them. Now, once they're peeled, you want to put them in some boiling water and let them come back to a boil. You'll notice that the water stopped boiling. So when the water comes back to a boil, I will start my timer for 15 minutes. It's going to take somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes for these to be ready. And the way you know they're ready is you take one out. I just take a spoon and pick out one piece and I take a fork or a knife and poke into it. I just jab it in there. If there's any resistance, if it's not soft, then you know they need to boil a little longer. If your knife or fork goes through it with no resistance, they're done. Don't keep boiling them until they turn mushy, just until they're fork tender or knife tender. Okay, so we're going to watch these, let them go, come to a boil, and then I will set my timer for 15 minutes. At the end of that 15 minutes, I'll check that we might have to add two, three, four, maybe even five more minutes, but we'll keep checking until they're ready, and then we will come back and drain them and make our mashed potatoes. We'll be back in just a minute. After we got our potatoes in the hot water and got them boiling, we decided we needed a little gravy to go on our mashed potatoes. So we're also going to show you how we make gravy. Now, I will tell you that there are almost countless ways to make gravy. My favorite gravy is sausage gravy, but that's not a good gravy for mashed potatoes, or at least it's not in our opinion. We don't like excuse me while I turn this down, we don't like sausage or meat in our gravy on our mashed potatoes. So normally, I would just use bacon grease to make gravy to go on mashed potatoes. But I know not everybody has bacon grease. I keep jars and jars and jars of bacon grease. We use a lot of it, but not everybody does that. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a good gravy to go on your mashed potatoes, just using butter, flour, and this is all-purpose flour. Some people call it plain flour, but you can also use self-rising. Either one works. Milk, and then salt and pepper. That's it. Five things, and this is so easy. So all you're going to do is take one stick of butter, and melt it in a pan or a skillet. I'm using a skillet today, but you can do this in a saucepan just as easily. So we're just going to put that on there, turn on our fire and get that melting. Now it's going to take a couple of minutes for it to melt. So I'm just going to help it along a little bit. I'm going to slice it into some pats so the butter will melt faster. The more surface you have against that skillet, the faster it's going to melt. You certainly don't have to do this, but it will help your butter melt faster if you cut it into pieces. And this, this is just so easy to do. Um, if you make a gravy out of butter, flour, milk, salt, and pepper, it's going to be a white gravy. It, it won't be like a brown gravy or like a sausage gravy. Sometimes has a little bit of a tint to it. It's not pure white. But this will be more of a, a white gravy. I've heard people call it milk gravy, which my grandmother called it milk gravy because it's made with milk and butter, so it's white. It kind of is the color of milk. So you can call it whatever you want to, but um, it's just a white gravy. Now, once we get, I need a little whisk here. Once you get your butter melted, and it's almost there, I'll turn that down just a little bit. I've got it down to about medium. We're going to sprinkle in our flour. So we used half cup butter, half cup of flour, and we're going to whisk that in. Now what we're doing here is making a roux. 
A roux is just butter and flour or grease and flour. You can do the same thing with sausage grease, bacon grease. Um, I've, I know people that even just make it with oil, like canola oil or vegetable oil. I have never made mine with oil, but I know you can do it because I know people who do. But today we're just using butter. Now, once you get this started cooking, you want to let it cook for about two minutes because you have to cook that raw taste out of the flour. If you put your milk and seasoning in before that cooks, it's going to have a raw taste to it and that's just not very appetizing. So let it cook for well, a good minute, maybe closer to two and you will see that it's starting to brown. That's okay. And we're just cooking, cooking, cooking. And you notice that I'm whisking because we don't want it to burn. So I'm just keeping it moving around and letting it cook. Okay, let me grab my milk. And now we're going to start to add our milk slowly. Now I have four cups of milk here. I may not need all of it. Or I may need a little bit more. But I think this will do it. How will you know when you have enough? <laughs> well, that's a good question. You just have to eyeball it. You just, you know when your, your gravy gets to the right consistency. So I've put in about a cup. And I'm going to get that roux all stirred in. And look how it's already thickening back up. You see that? That's okay. That's what we want. We want it to thicken. So I'm going to add about another cup. And we have to whisk this because we don't want lumps in our gravy. So whisk, 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 whisk. And I'm sloshing it out, of course. But, you know, that's part of cooking. And you'll notice our potatoes are still over here cooking. We can get the gravy made while the potatoes are boiling away over here. All right. I think we're about ready to add some more milk. This is kind of thick right there. Let me stir that in. Okay. Add a little more milk. I think we've got about three cups in now. Now we'll start to watch to see if we have enough or if we need to keep adding. And turn our fire up. Oh, you see it's thickening right there. I'm gonna scoop my skillet back just a little bit. Yeah, see it thickening up here. And we just keep stirring. And we keep cooking. My arm's tired, so I'm switching. Now, of course, you don't want your gravy to be runny like water, but you don't want it thick like paste either. So there's a fine balance there. You just want it thick enough that it will like coat a spoon. not so thick that it's like paste. All right, can you see that it's thickening up there? See the, see the bubbles coming up? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, and look how it's thickening. See there when I pull my whisk through it, how it kind of leaves a line? Oh yeah, nice. Now, are we gonna need more? milk in there. See how much I've used so far. I have used about two and a half cups. I'm gonna put just a little bit more. Let it keep cooking. Stir that in. Now, 
A lot of people will add their salt and pepper to their roux before they start adding the milk. I don't do that because I like to be able to add some and taste it to see if I need to add more. I don't want, oh yeah, I need more here. Um, I don't want to add too much at the beginning because you can't take it out. You can always add more. So I always wait and season mine after I have it made. All right, we're just going to add all this, I think. This is like the ultimate comfort food, isn't it? Oh, mashed potatoes. Absolutely. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay, we're putting all four cups in. And that should do it. Now, here's the thing. If your gravy gets a little too thick, what do you do? You just add a little more milk. Um, but if you get too much milk in it. If you get too much milk in it, you just have to keep cooking it until it thickens back up. You cannot add more flour or any kind of thickener to it once you put the milk in and start cooking it. So... Um, if, if you get too much milk in it, you just keep cooking it until it thickens up and it will eventually. All right. I'm going to turn this down to low and I'm going to add my salt and pepper. I'm going to put one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. We like pepper in ours. We put quite a bit, and now I'm just going to stir that in. If you are not crazy about pepper gravy, then use a quarter of a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. You make it the way you like it. This is your dish. We make it the way we like it. You should do the same. You know, most recipes, now when you're baking it's different, but most recipes are a suggestion. <laughs> you can change it. Lots of wiggle room. Lots of wiggle room. So you make it the way you like it. I'm going to turn my fire up just a little bit so I can get it to thicken up a little better. Now, we have our gravy made. I'm going to let it sit here and just stay warm. It will thicken as it sits here and cooks. And our potatoes will be finished in about three and a half minutes or so. And we will come back and show you how to finish the mashed potatoes. We'll be right back. Our timer just went off for the potatoes, so they've been boiling for 15 minutes. Now I want you to look at the boil. I have this set on about medium. It's on six out of 10. So it's not a full rolling boil. It's not like I've got it set on high and it's just boiling over. It's just a nice, medium boil and it's done that for 15 minutes so let's check our potatoes and just see if they're ready so let's pick out one piece we'll take a knife and just go right down in it and it just went right through you can see there's no resistance so we know they are ready so i'll turn off my heat let me grab my dish towel actually you know i think i'm going to grab some oven gloves because I do not want to get burned and that dish towel is a little damp from where I've been using it so we're just going to drain our potatoes now don't do what I'm doing I'm pouring it toward me and if you do that you're going to get a steam facial but I'm standing way back from it it's always better to pour it away from you okay so we have them in the sieve and they're draining. We want them to drain well. Notice they're not mushy. They're still in pieces. They haven't cooked to death. So they're, they're done, but they're not mushed up. Now I have put my stick of butter. Yes, I used a whole stick. I put that in my mixer. And if you don't have a stand mixer like this, you can use just a hand mixer or you can use a ricer or you can just mash them up with a potato masher. 
Okay, so we're going in with our potatoes. And I really like for that to sit there for just a few seconds and let that butter start to get a little bit soft. Um, if you turn your mixer on while that butter is in there, and it is at room temperature, but especially if it was cold, it would just knock potatoes all over your kitchen. So give it just a minute. Oh, you know what? Works better when it's plugged up. It always works better when it's plugged up. And I've got my cord wrapped around my mixer, so I've got to pull that through. Leave it to me. Okay. Now, let's get that back down in there. Plug up the mixer. Now it should work better. All right. So we're just going to let that mix. There went one. Tap. There went another one. Told you. That butter kind of makes them jumpy. And that may not be all the butter I put in. Sometimes I add more than a stick. Remember, this was about two and a half pounds of potatoes. Now, you can see how thick they are there. Look, I'm going to raise this up so you can see. Now, that's not bad, but they need to be creamier. So, let me... You push them down in there. They tend to want to go up around the edge. And I don't have my scraper blade on. So, turn them back on. And I'm going to drizzle in a little bit of milk. Not a lot, just a splash or two. Oh, look how much creamier they've gotten. And now I'm just going to whip the fire out of them. Okay. Now, if we tasted them, they would be okay. But they have to have seasoning. They have to have salt and pepper. So I'm just going to go in with my salt shaker. I have no clue how much I put in. I just shake it until I think I've got enough. I... I try not to overdo it because, like I said earlier, you can always add some more. You can't take it out. Now, I'm going to go back in one more time and scrape around the edge. Make sure it's all down in there. Okay. And let's beat it one more time. Now, I'm a little different than some people. My mashed potatoes do not have to be totally mashed. I do like a few little chunks in mine. That's how you know they're real mashed potatoes. Oh, look at that. All right. I am going to do a taste test. And since we made gravy, let's grab a spoon here. Since we made gravy... We'll have to put some gravy on it. I'm not going to do a huge amount to do the taste test, but you know, you have to make a little bird nest. That's what I used to say when I was a kid. Give me a minute to make my bird nest. You have to make a little nest for your gravy. And then we will add in our gravy. Oh, look at that. That is just perfect. I'm stirring it because since it's been sitting here for a few minutes, it's kind of gotten thick on top. So I'm just stirring that down in. But look at that gravy. Perfect consistency. Isn't that beautiful? I it's guess nice. the food can be beautiful. <laughs> okay. You want the first bite, babe? Um, I'll wait. You'll Good. wait. I know. I'm afraid it'll be a little messy, so I'll just wait. There's the potatoes, and of course you have to dunk. <sighs> oh, yeah. There's a few small lumps in the potatoes. Perfect. 
You know what Melissa said a while ago? This is the ultimate comfort food. It goes Man. with so many things. Oh, it goes with everything. Well, maybe not Chinese food. <laughs> goes with a lot of things. It goes with pork, pork chops, ham, pork tenderloin. Beef. <laughs> goes great with beef. I don't care if you're serving steak or roast or whatever. It goes really well with that. Chicken. And that's what we're having today. We're having baked chicken legs with mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm. If you never made homemade mashed potatoes and gravy, I beg you, give this a try. It is so good. You will be amazed at how easy it is and how delicious it is. All right. Thank you for watching our video. We appreciate you supporting our channel. We really would appreciate if you'd go right below this and give us a thumbs up. And if you've not already, go to the other side and click the subscribe button and the little notification bell that's right beside of it. And as always, we really would appreciate it if you'd click the share button and share our video to your social media so that other people can see us. They may want mashed potatoes and gravy too. And we always appreciate your kind comments that are below the video. Melissa reads every one of them and she does her best to respond to all of them. It's kind of become a job for her to try to respond, but she does a great job doing that. All right, thanks again for watching our video. And remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day. Go eat some mashed potatoes and gravy.